Hey everyone, Kimchiki here with another Indie Watch where I feature games every Friday. And what I've been struggling with is that there are so many indie games and I need guidelines. So on the second Friday, which is this Friday, I am going to be featuring games that I have played this month that I think you should not miss. But let's get to what we're here for. The indie games that you should not miss that I've been playing this July. So, um, as always, Steam links and trailers and any pertinent information are below in the description so watch the full trailers go look at the websites we want to support our indie developers because they are making such great things and of course i cheated top five plus one honorable mention so let's go to the honorable mention see here a quest a game that's now nominated for a Games for Change Award, Sea Hero Quest is actually a mobile title that provides data to help scientists learn about and combat dementia. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but really check out the website and see what they're doing with this info because it's really interesting and it's exactly what I think games can do to really help change the world. In terms of gameplay, it has you memorize pathways to find buoys that help you chase the sea creature and collect memories, and you earn a certain number of starfish for completing each navigation and you can use those starfish to customize and beautify your boat. Uh, this is a casual game, but really it deserves an honorable mention because of the implications, how you can help provide baseline data to compare memory versus dementia and really just help scientists do what they do while you're doing what you love to do, play games. Lines. I was a sucker for Mini Metro when it came out, and this game reminded me a lot of that at first glance. Of course, I learned while there's a similar minimal aesthetic and stylish color palette, the gameplay is very, very different. You move in place and remove dots to initiate a race between two or more colors. And really, a strong understanding of cause and effect is probably going to be your greatest asset. This is one of the best sort of zen, casual puzzle games that I've played since probably Mini Metro, actually. Walden, a game. Can't make it out to nature, but you're itching for that escape? While there are plenty of first-person survival games out there, there is one that stood out for me in terms of actually having you relax versus making it a survivor horror game. Walden a Game is a first-person sim that actually follows the philosopher's experience living at Walden Pond. Henry David Thoreau is an author, read the book, it's amazing, um, but the game focuses and is loosely based on his first year in the woods and allows you to survive and take time to just breathe. And even though it could never actually replace going outside, I felt like the environment and atmosphere was really well done, and this is a game that you should check out. Also, this is another game that is nominated for a Games for Change award, so be sure to check out that list because it's got a pretty strong stable of titles. Drago Dino. I love platformers, and this one's got a great 2D art style, and the oversized dino heads really caught my eye. Bob, a Drago Dino, is trying to get his lost egg that's stuck at the top of a tree. And throughout the platforming, you'll work to collect powers and defeat guardians to get to that egg. I love that there's also a co-op mode available for those of you who want to play with a buddy. Passepartout, the starving artist. Ever look at art in a museum and think, God, I could totally do that. Well, now's your chance. Try to become a famous artist or fail miserably. This combines what I always tried to have my Sims do, and with my child of dream of having my MMS Paint or Mario Paint works of art discovered and sold for millions. One of the most unique titles I've played in a while. Basically, you just work to sell your paintings to a bevy of selective customers, and you will probably learn to hate a few of them. It's great. The end is nigh. The creators of The Binding of Isaac have a new game out, The End is Nigh. With a tagline of where you die a lot, but that's okay because you're probably dead anyway, this game is going to provide you with quite a challenge and they're not shying from it. But if you're playing, it's probably what you like in games anyway. There are a reported 600 plus levels, so get ready for difficulty to be ramped up. And with a subdued palette, really awesome sound design, I love the squishes of ash jumping around, they're great and the goal of making a friend, what could the developers be talking about when they mention pain and suffering in this game? Oh yeah, the friend you're trying to make is out of the pieces of people you collect while traveling along in this post-apocalyptic world. What fun! 
As always, there are way more indie games that I'm playing right now that I can even mention in one video. Uh, these are just the ones that really stood out to me for this month of July. So if you have any games that you would like to talk about, be sure to put them in the comments below. And if you'd like, add me on Twitter and we can talk more indie games because I love talking video games. So I will see you guys next time. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more of these videos, my Let's Play, my dance videos, anything like that. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.